Hey guys, in this video we are going to be setting up a Fujitsu scanner. This is an FI6130 to hook up to a computer so we can scan pictures or uh, regular Word documents to a Windows computer. And so the very first thing that you're going to do is just go on Google and look up the model you have. So I've got an FI6130 um, and this is not the Z, sorry. So uh, we're just going to go to the first link here, and uh, so even if you don't have the disk, you can still do this process. The key driver that we care about here is the Twain driver, and we'll see that it is supported in Windows 10, which this computer is running. Um, this is the only driver that you need. So you're going to download this driver. This is an interesting driver because um, it doesn't really install anything. It just creates a directory and then in that directory there's a setup file. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna download this. I've already downloaded it previously, but what we're gonna do next is open up this file. We're gonna click on run. And then um, because I've already executed this previously, this command line window came up and it like flashed for one second, created all these directories and then disappeared. Um, the Basically what this is doing is it's self-extracting uh, and you have to navigate into this folder afterwards. So um, if you've already, if you're seeing this page, it means you've already run the driver or yeah, whatever executable Fujitsu provided. Now what you need to do is open up Windows Explorer on the computer, and then in your address bar there should be something called Disk One, Disk One, backslash, and this um, you might need to search for it. So one second. I have to figure out where did they save it because if you just run it, it might be under your documents folder. Sorry. Yes. So um, wherever you have downloaded the executable file, so in this case I downloaded it to the default location, which is in my desktop folder. Um, it creates a new directory called disk1, which is a very ambiguous name. But the point is, within that directory that it just extracted itself to, you will now run setup. Click yes. It's going to go through the installation prompts. I have installed this software previously, so it will throw an error, most likely. Um, but basically, you just click through next. And you just stick to all the defaults. There's really nothing special you need to do here. Um, the other thing is while you're installing your driver, um, don't have the printer or the scanner connected to your computer so you can be disconnected. And right now it's just going through these screens. This installation process does take a little bit of time even if you've got a new modern computer. Uh, we were using this scanner with like Windows XP machines, but um, yeah, on modern computers it still works fortunately because Microsoft is very nice about their backwards compatibility. Um, so I'm just gonna let this thing finish up. Um, it's okay to leave it on, um, but yeah, you will get this prompt saying, do you want to restart your computer? Because I've already restarted um, previously, I click no, but if this is the first time you're installing it, click yes. Now is the point where you will have your scanner powered on. Even if it has power, it doesn't turn on, so you need to press this power button to get the thing to turn on. Then what you do is you connect the USB cable. Try and do this one hand. Okay, so we've got the USB cable connected for the uh, scanner. I believe it's a USB A to USB two cable. Um, now what you'll do is even if you don't see like a recognized new software prompt here, we did just install the scanner. So if I go to my desktop on my computer and I put in a picture into the scanner and then I click on scan. What happens here in Windows is that we have a window pop-up and on this window I actually tell it what to do. So um, in Windows you've got different options here. If I click, as soon as I click OK, it's going to actually scan the text or the picture, whatever you have. 
Um, and I do believe this is black and white. There might be an option to actually make this scan in color. Um, I haven't read the manuals too much on that, but basically, uh, once you've done that, within depending on which option you've chosen, um, you can see the actual picture show up here. So uh, yeah, that's gonna wrap things up for this video. Installing these scanners can be a pain in the ass. I know that's why I'm making this video, and I know it's very expensive, and IT professionals charge a lot of money. They shouldn't. This is pretty simple, straightforward stuff that I think anyone should be able to do. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and thank you all for watching.